Senate Judiciary Chairman Pat Leahy made some comments last week I think are worth the parsing. Let's see if we can get them up on the screen right now. And I quote, the conservative activism of recent years has not been good for the court, given the ideological challenge to the Affordable Care Act and the extensive support of precedent. It would be extraordinary for the Supreme Court not to defer to Congress in this matter that so clearly affects interstate commerce. That's Senator Leahy on the Supreme Court uh, making a reference to Obamacare. Remarkable stuff when you think about it. Judiciary Committee, Chairman, Democrat, basically throwing down the gauntlet to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court after the oral arguments, but before the ruling. So it's not as if he's commenting on the ruling afterwards. It's during deliberation saying, don't you dare, or we're going to really take after you. So it's an, it's an effort, in my view, an act of intimidation. Now, Paul, I wonder if you can drill down a little bit here. What did Senator Leahy mean exactly when he talks about conservative activism? Well, it's the new liberal talking point, if you will. They, their basic argument is all you conservatives used to criticize liberal judges for activism, for overturning um, uh, acts of Congress. Now you, the tables have turned and you're conservatives. You're going to, if you overturn any statute, then you're guilty of conservative activism. Of course, that's nonsense. Activism is not defined by overturning laws, right? Hundreds of laws have been overturned since Marbury versus Madison. Remember that? The in famous 1803 case. That established judicial review. The definition of activism is, is your judgment as a judge the Supreme Court rooted in constitutional principle or not. If it's rooted in the Constitution, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's legal and constitutional and meets our highest principles. If it doesn't, and it's just your partisan view, or if it's pulled out of thin air, like I would argue Roe v. Wade, where emanations and penumbras that they found in the Constitution, then I think you can say it's activism. And it is true that judges on both sides can be guilty of activism, but in this case, the liberals now are got this theme going, which I think is deliberately trying to intimidate Roberts and say, look, if you overturn the Affordable Care Act, we're going to define you as a partisan, radical, conservative judge, and we're going to make you pay and pay and pay politically. Well, we're talking, to, again, to Wall Street Journal editorial page editor Paul Gigo on some comments that Senator Pat Leahy made to intimidate the Supreme Court before the Obamacare decision. Um, Paul, let's talk politics here. Um, how does this play into the president's reelection campaign? Does it tell us anything um, about how they're going or aiming to position this decision before it even comes out? I think it does suggest, uh, and the president's own comments after the oral argument suggest, that if th this is overturned by the Supreme Court, however narrowly, and even if it's only par part of the law, let's say it's the mandate to purchase insurance and maybe a few of the, the, the mandates that are closely associated with that mandate, uh, that they're going to make the Supreme Court an issue in the campaign. Because uh, I mean, the rhetoric all suggests that they're going to try to stigmatize the court, say it's been a politicized decision, and rather than come back and say, "Okay, we can fix it, do this or that," they'll make this a campaign theme. So that would be my guess uh, that that's how they're going to go, and this is part of that, I think. But we've got about a minute left. Um, if let's say the court does overturn the the, the mandate or even the entire law. Uh, what's the Republican response? If it's not judicial activism, what, what, is, what is that finding? Well, I think we'll see what the, the decision says, but my view would be that you know, this, was, this suit was undertaken by 26 governors and the, national, uh, the NFIB, National Federation of Independent Business, a small business lobby, because they think that, in fact, the mandate does give the federal government power, does accrue to the federal government powers of police powers, so-called, that in the Constitution are reserved to the states. It's things like in, judging, in, uh, um, assessing individual behavior. Mm -hmm. You can't commit crimes. The federal government you know, is much more narrowly constricted in what it can do. So uh, I think they'll say it's rooted, it was right constitutionally. What they need to do is go beyond the law and then fight, I think, to do something for health care in the right way and make, a, and, and make that an issue in the campaign.